Hello beautiful internet family, Dan A from DanceTube.tv and today I'm reviewing the Gladius Mini, an underwater drone from Chasing. I will have a link in the description below to check out the Gladius Mini on Chasing's website. I'll also have a link to the Amazon listing as well if you'd like to pick it up from there. But if you're new to DanceTube.tv then make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as I am brutally honest in my reviews and I thoroughly test the tech that I am reviewing. So that means that you get a true representation of what the tech is all about, what it can do, what it can handle, and what its limitations are. I've been testing the Gladius Mini now for a few weeks, and it truly is a yellow submarine. Shout out to the Beatles. I really do like this unit for the most part. There are definitely a few things that do make it quite limited in what you can actually do with it, and there are a few things that you need to be mindful of, but for the most part, this is one of the coolest pieces of technology that I've tested in a very, very long time. Now, the first thing to be mindful of is the tether, or the cable that runs from the drone to the base station. Now, this is a necessity with underwater drones, as it's very hard to send a signal through dense water. But it's also a very limited factor and something that you need to be extremely mindful of. The Gladius Mini really doesn't work along a beach front. So where you have waves crashing in, even if it's relatively calm, the cable itself is actually going to be pulled back with that current and with those waves. And it actually pulls the drone back, which means that it can't actually really handle any sort of wave system at all. So don't think about taking it near any sort of beachfront. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> and I also fell over, which you can see right here. I also had a few occasions where the cable actually got tangled up around a pole and also around a few rocks near where I was actually launching the drone from. So you really have to be mindful about the location. You really need to monitor that cable as you're using the drone. And for the most part, you want to be in an open area where there's nothing that you can actually get tangled up in. Another thing to be mindful of is the water conditions. So if you live in an area where there's murky water, then this is going to be really not the greatest unit for you. You need to be near super clear water, whether you are a fisherman, whether you go near wrecks regularly, if you're a scuba diver, if you're involved in pier inspection, swimming pool inspection, or even water tank inspections, then this could be a really cool unit to pick up. And it really could be a lot of fun and also add some value to your industry if you work in an industry that could benefit from an underwater drone. Now, the camera quality from this unit is fantastic. It has a 4K camera, but it really depends again on the clarity of the water. You need to be in pristine water to really make the most out of that 4K camera. You have them two big old LED lights on the front, which do an amazing job of lighting up a subject. But again, you need clear water and you need to be relatively close to the subject or to whatever it is that you're looking at to really make the most out of those LEDs and that 4K camera. I was really impressed with the battery life from this unit. They claim that you get two hours of battery life, and for the most part, that's pretty accurate. I reckon I get about an hour and 50, maybe an hour and 45 minutes of battery life. Again, that depends on the current, depends on the situation you're in, how much harder the unit actually has to work. But if you're in clear, calm water, then for the most part, it's going to do a really good job and you're going to get close to two hours of battery life. So that even means that you can check out one location, travel to another location, and then dump it in the water and get another 40, 50 minutes of battery life. So I was really happy with the battery life. And overall, the actual unit itself handles fantastically in the water. It has a low, medium, and high speed setting. It's really agile in the water, super easy to control. And I was impressed overall with how the unit handles. One thing to mention is how fiddly the actual depth control can be through the controller. So using the stick to send the drone deeper or to pull it up to the surface, that seems to be very fiddly in my experiences. I found that you have to be very deliberate with your movements and sometimes it will just send it right down. And for the most part, when I was in shallow water, it wasn't the most responsive and I'd find it would actually hit the bottom quite a lot because I didn't have those really fine movements that I wanted and you actually have to be quite deliberate with it and force 
the stick down, which would then send the drone down way too fast, and you couldn't do little minute movements, which would have been amazing to see. For the most part though, the other stick, which controls the actual movement of the drone, is extremely responsive, and for the most part, I was really impressed with how the unit itself actually handles underwater. I just wish that that responsiveness was mimicked with the depth stick so that we could have those minute little accurate movements when we're going deeper or when we're pulling the drone up to the surface. That would make the world of difference, but that's just something to be mindful of. And they were just my experiences with the drone when it came to the maneuverability and the overall functionality of the actual remote control and the drone itself. I was extremely impressed with the depth lock mode. It did a fantastic job of holding the depth that it was at. Even if there was a bit of current or a bit of movement in the water, it did a great job of holding that depth that you actually locked it to. Another thing that really impressed me was the tilt lock mode. So you have a 45 degree adjustable tilt lock mode, meaning that you can angle the drone down on a 45 degree angle or up on a 45 degree angle. So you can really get those unique angles when you're trying to film underneath something or you're trying to film down at a subject. And for the most part, again, really impressed with both the depth lock and the tilt lock modes. I have mentioned the limitations of having a cable connected to the drone, but for the most part, this is actually almost necessary even if they did have the technology to send a signal down there because it would be really hard to figure out where the drone is otherwise. The cable is very buoyant, so you can see roughly where the drone is. Obviously the cable goes down with the drone, but the rest of it will actually be floating on the surface of the water, so you know roughly where the drone is. And for the most part, that is actually really helpful, especially in murky water, otherwise you would have no idea where the drone is. And there are a few experiences I had where we were kind of filming trying to figure out where we were and we were completely lost so we had to bring the drone back up to the surface to have any sort of idea where the drone was and having that cable meant that we could actually pull the unit back if we had ever lost it which we got it caught in a pipe at one point which was terrifying but i found out that turning off the motors and then actually pulling the unit was probably the better way to save it if you try to pull the unit while the motors are still on, then there's a lot of resistance and it's very hard to retrieve the unit back. The Gladius Mini is a five thruster underwater drone. And for the most part, it does an amazing job of holding its position underwater. Because it is a five thruster drone, it doesn't actually account for side drift. So if you're facing towards a subject and the current is pushing on the side of the unit itself, you will notice it will start to drift. Even though it's holding its depth, it will drift slowly. So you have to be mindful about that. But I found that if I actually face towards the current, it does a pretty good job of holding its position. So you've just gotta be mindful of a few of these things, the cable, the actual depth control, and also the fact that it doesn't really have the best side hold. So if there's a current coming in on the side, it will start to drift. I think that underwater drones have a very particular niche and not everyone would get much use out of an underwater drone. But if you're a fisherman, if you're a scuba diver, if you are involved in any sort of pier inspection or swimming pool inspection, or if you are regularly around open, clear water with limited current, then this could be a fantastic toy and also a fantastic tool for your inspections or even just for underwater photography or videography. This drone in the perfect condition is a fantastic unit and underwater drones are really exciting. I can't wait to see where they go in the future, but for right now, the five thruster Gladius Mini is one of the best on the market. That two hour battery life is phenomenal. The unit itself is really, really sturdy and I was impressed with the overall performance of it. So definitely let me know what you think in the comments of the Gladius Mini. If you do wanna pick yourself one up, I will have those links in the description below. And if you want to subscribe and hit that notification bell, then you will be notified when I release more videos on the Gladius Mini and other drones, underwater drones, action cameras, 360 degree cameras, motorized skateboards and scooters, and whatever else I'll be reviewing in the future. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to have a splendid day and peace out.